Welcome to Harvest World Assembly, where the word comes like fresh bread from the ovens of heaven. And as you listen to God's servant, Pastor Gwenga Shafe, keep these words as they purify you in this journey of destiny. Hallelujah. Please let's sit for a while. Now let me ask a question before we we proceed. How many of us, please can you hear me clearly? Oh, I don't. <laughs> now this is this is just a question. You don't need to feel guilty. Maybe you should feel guilty anyway, but uh, how many of us like really take our time to study the word of God like every day? You know you can't lie now. You are in, you are in, <laughs> you are in God's presence. Okay, please, praise the Lord, raise your hands. Aha. I hope you can see the... Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know, can you get this volume up just a bit? How many of us meditate on God's word often? I'm not talking about reading. Meditate. See very few ones. So maybe what we should be doing today is a Bible study. Hallelujah. How many of us like singing? <laughs> See, let me tell you. As a pastor, these are the things the Lord will assess me on if he were to come today. How many of you use YouTube a lot? YouTube, like to check for different things. Please raise your hand. I need to be sure I'm talking to All right. Some of you don't check anything. You don't. You are, you are. Okay. You prefer Instagram to YouTube. You prefer like maybe you know those instagram has short videos so it could be easier for you you like you don't know what i want to see i'm not setting a trap i just you prefer instagram to youtube please ah they are not here they are still coming uh okay we have a big problem actually i'm supposed to just teach on this chapter but as Pastor Kenny was reading it, I just realized, wow, there are so many things involved in that chapter. And maybe what we should do is just um, take some time. Look at it. So let me ask a question. And this is not part of my message because the title of my message today is Toss Here the Lord. That's the title. But before we delve into the message, what are some of the challenges we experience with not being able to read God's word. Anybody? Let's have a conversation. I don't want to assume. Please, Pastor Tokwe, let's get a mic. Who wants to? What are some of the challenges for the average Lagosian? Distraction. F fatigue. Now, how many of us here spend a minimum of. Uh, Pastor Tokwe, please come close because it's confession, it's story time. Yes. There's something I see on the TikTok. They say story time, and they'll start confessing. You know, <laughs> so so fatigue, right? What else? Distraction. Yes. Okay. What? Else? Who, who else has any other? The the Lagos rush. Okay. Sorry. Somebody saying something there. Uh, let's give her the mic. I, uh, I need to be sure. Let's even know. Maybe we are just laboring into empty baskets. We need to know so we can stitch the basket. Please, is it okay we do this for five minutes? Let's just get it out of the way. Um, I think for me, is the fact is concentration. So I'm always having, for, I'm just speaking for myself, I'm always having to do stuff with my hands. So maybe sometimes I may not 
able to sit for long. I may prefer audio Bible, but sometimes my mind drifts away as well. So that's one of Do my you have a Bible? I do. Hard copy? Yes. Where is it? It's at home. <laughs> do you know that clearly people will resort to electronic means of reading? They read less. They read less of the Bible. Now, it might be easier for my young children here, these younger ones, because that's their time. That's their generation. My children are very familiar with the iPhone. It's amazing. At their age, somebody, sir, please talk to me, sir. Sorry, part of the problem is that somehow Bible is pretty difficult to understand. I know how long I struggle before, before understanding Bible. You will read chapter 1, and what chapter 2 is saying is even older than chapter 1. You get it? So if you did not read Bible with other things, you find it difficult. Is it possible that maybe the version could be creating? Yes. Like yes, maybe you are using King I'm, James. I'm King James, King James version person. So you know, and uh, you, you'll be thinking that as you read book number one is past, Book number two should be more present. But when you are reading, you find out that the one closer is even older than what you have read. So in, before I could understand it, I started studying with other, other things. Other materials. So when I see a word, I now go and study what led to this word. When was it said? And what, when was it first? I always go with a let first, me, let first me support you. Principle. Let me support you. The book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible, historically. But please, can you check what number that book is in the Bible? Please, somebody should count from Genesis, Genesis, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, you know, and so on, and Judges, and so on. Please, I want to know where my brother is, Brother Job. No, eh? Somebody said 19. How many books do we have? Eh? 18. What, how many books do we have in the Old Testament? Huh? Look at it now. It's not a it's not a compulsory question. Just open your table of content. <laughs> How many books do we have as a whole? Sixty-six. So what do we have? One is twenty-seven. Which is twenty-seven? New Testament. So what do we have minus Sir? Thirty-nine. And among thirty-nine, Job is number what? Eighteen. But Job is older than Moses. So I'm just trying to emphasize what he's saying. Please, are you with me now? Yes. Now, let me... I think we may need to have a particular Sunday. Eh? Brother Pat, we'll come out here and discuss this thing. Because the truth of the matter is, the farther you are away from God's word, the farther you actually are from God, If you don't have a system that allows you consistently meditate. And I, I, you know, I told you, Japan is still 98% uh, is it Buddhism. And they have Taoism. They have all the, so many religions that are built on a system that rewards commitment. This is not my message, but maybe somebody is pulling this thing out of me. Please, are you with me now? There was a generation that arose in Israel. I think it was Gideon's generation. Huh? That didn't know the Lord. Abi, was it Gideon? Gideon's generation, they didn't know the Lord. Everything they knew was what they told them. They didn't have that personal experience with God. So they are Christian by name, but unbelieving at heart. And this is a real concern for me because I was recently being confronted with the fact that, recently, that I will still have to go to other nations and start churches. And then the question is, what is the guarantee that you have what it takes to survive in a place where even if you don't have cash, your credit card works? Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you, are, not, you are poor, but you still have what you want. You can eat. 
that 8,000 naira they were promising you guys, or is it 10,000 that they are promising? And I hope you know your name is not on that list. They say it's for the poorest of the poor. The poorest of the poor don't have bank account. So please, who exactly are the poorest? It's time to make money. It's time, it's time to make money. I want you to follow me. Unfortunately, uh, I think we should talk about this. Pastor Dave, maybe we should both do a YouTube live. Then people will just join on YouTube. Let's talk about these things. You cannot... Let me, let me just chip this in so we can go to our message. It's nothing to be proud about. Huh? I know sometimes you miss it once in a while and all, but it's nothing to be proud about. There are certain books of the Bible that will appeal to you more by reason of your person. You can start from there. Then the Bible, even though when you look at it from the surface, it looks like maybe the Bible is disjointed. No. The Bible is built systematically and select, the books are selected system, bring it down a bit, systematically such that certain books may address certain things more. For instance, if you study the book of John, the gospel of John was the last gospel that was writ written. But in the hierarchy, it's number four. Are you with me now? When you open your Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. But the book of John was the last. It was written after the book of Revelations. See, have you heard people say, oh, the Bible contradicts itself, that what John said is not what Matthew said. Have you heard things like that? Okay, yes. These are what we call, because I don't want to start what I cannot finish. David understands, because we had this comment. I don't, please, can I just say something, then I go into my message. Huh? When you read the account of Matthew, you may see a story here. In John, you will sit in another place. Have you seen it before? Then you go on the street and somebody asking you, hey, how can you say the Bible is correct? Look at this, look at that. And really it is there. But you see, when we were growing up in church, they, they also did not help us properly. What they told us was that the Bible and every word of God is inspired, is accurate. Is this. They didn't tell us that these are there's a difference between eyewitness account and what God said himself. Do you know the difference between eyewitness account? If you go to court, hey, if you go to court and they said, they put you on the stand and they say, did you see what happened when that man was shot? You said yes. Let me ask you a question. Do you think the judge is really looking for somebody, for three witnesses? Okay. If, I am the, if you are the judge, man, and they brought three witnesses, and they all said the same thing the same way, wouldn't you suspect that it's suspicious, right? Because it's as if maybe both of you have, all of you have met, and you've discussed, this is how we are going to say it. It was 3 a.m. How can everybody be saying 3 a.m.? Somebody should be able to say like maybe 3.15, 3.30. So the accuracy of eyewitness account is not that it is verbatim. It is that it is similar. There's a difference between the word of the Lord that is consistent because of what he himself has said as against what all of us were at the, pro, at the crusade when Jesus turned uh, five loaves and uh, two fish to, to feed 5,000 people. But because of where I was sitting in the church, I will be seeing that thing differently. Some people, I'm in this church now, I'm speaking to but some people can only see the back of my head. But they are in church. If there's a wrinkle at the back of my suit, some people will most likely see it if by virtue of where they are standing. There's a difference between eyewitness account. What eyewitness account tells you is that even though five people have given accounts, you can see a consistent similarity. That's what makes it accurate. Not that we are trying to twist words and make them look the same. Please, am I helping somebody this morning? So I think we need to like have this uh, conversation because I noticed that a lot of believers are unable to defend their faith. 
and they are trying to struggle with, oh, there is number 50 here. There is a, I hope you know. <laughs> this is not why I'm here today, but... Ah, uh, uh, oh, God help me. It's like I've been bottling this thing for a while, so it's just... How many of you know that as of today, at the top of my head, there are at least five to six copies of the Quran that are completely different from each other. But you don't know. They won't tell you. There's one copy that is popular in the Saudi Arabian area. There's another that is popular on this side. If you want to appreciate the Bible, you must be a student of history. You must be what? A student of history. Have you ever heard? Okay, some of you don't read the Quran. Have you ever read, heard? Okay, have you heard? Not read. Have you heard that, the, that Muhammad stated that according to the words of Allah, that if any Muslim has any question, that they should refer to the Gospels. Have you heard it before? No, have you heard it before? That is said there, it's, in the, it's still there, they have not deleted it. That they should refer to the Gospels and those, of, those Jews that they will be able to explain to them. So the common argument today is that the Bible is already corrupted. Have you also heard that one? Have you heard that the Bible is corrupted? Please, can you show me the original copy? You must be a student of history. What did Paul, sorry, Peter tell us? He said we must always be ready. Be ready to, to give an answer to anyone who asks you any question about your faith. This is why, as wonderful as it is, and I need you to give me your attention, to have online prayer meetings and minister to people, it cannot be the standard. It's good to have it. And it has its place. But in terms of raising Christians, who can hold a document and defend? So the Christianity is now like the army of Israel in the midst of five kings. Have you read Bible stories in, like in kings where they are, like this one now, they are surrounded by three kings. All right? So, but there was a particular battle where the nation of Israel was surrounded by five kings. Buddhism, Hinduism, New, new Age religion, Islam. So everybody wants to destroy this Christianity. That's the, my, my, my friends, my enemies, enemy. I, I don't know the way they say it, but it's my friend or something. Or something. So w once we have mutual interest, all right, we are friends. When we are true with them, we will not face ourselves. Buddhism and Hinduism don't have any problem with you. Once you die, you reincarnate. There's no heaven or hell. Whether it's uh, as a goat, you can come back as a goat. Eat all the grasses for whatever you can. Die, come back as a fly. So the, that's why you find that when you watch some of these Asian films, they find it very easy to die. You kill my master. I prefer to die for my master. I, you know, have you, you know what I'm talking about. Those things are reflective of what they actually, it's not just a movie. They believe that, they think it. They believe it's an honor to die for your master. To die for the integrity of your family. They believe in it. They believe it's good for a man to die and let his wife live. They, they fire an arrow, you stand in front of the arrow. Do you believe that it is good for you to, to, to be shot and you take the bullet for your wife? Somewhere in your mind, you want to take it and say, ah, she will marry, she will go and marry somebody else. <laughs> I mean, I let her die. <laughs> So in Nigeria, we don't believe that. <laughs> Are you blessed this morning? I'm just trying to stimulate a conversation. Because for a book to be authentic, it must stand the test of academic research. Welcome to Harvest World Assembly, where the word comes like fresh bread from the ovens of heaven. 
And as you listen to God's servant, Pastor Gwenga Shafe, keep these words as they purify you in this journey of destiny. I have found mercy and I have been revived. Hallelujah. And your fire is not going out again. Hallelujah. I say your fire is not going out again. Now that amen is for me. I say your fire is not going out again. There are fires and there are fires. There is a fire that comes by reason of the gathering of sticks. But when Moses saw the fire of God, he said that we turn aside. There is a kind of fire that compels attention. Moses said that we turn aside. And when he turned aside, he came out a prophet. Hallelujah. The voice of the Lord is in your house. And the voice of the Lord is upon your mouth. I said the encounter of these 21 days, you will come out with clear words and there won't be words that will tarry for long. They will be fulfilled by the mercies of God. No more delayed prophecies. There are certain things I've shared with us in the last one month and I, I really don't know if I preached at all but um, I think we need to take some time to address some of these things. But I want you to have a victory mindset. A lot of Christians have warfare mindset but they don't have victory mindset. That means they will continue to go for deliverance and deliverance but they will never be free. Come on, say I'm victorious. Come on, say I have a victorious mindset. Do you think that the day Anna came before the Lord, can you hear me please? God, I don't even know where I am right now. Can you hear me please? Huh? Do you think that the day that Anna prayed, that prayer that God heard, Huh? Do you think that was the first time she prayed? Hallelujah. And I hope the children too, because some of them don't know these things concern them. My first experience with spiritual warfare was around age five and six, when I had to go through surgery. Huh? Please, are you with me now? I had to go through surgery. And I was operated on several times. First of all, I swallowed money, which was due to nobody's fault but mine. Then I had been given a particular injection. It's a kind of vaccination. If you are in the north, you get it. As a young child, uh, I don't know. If maybe it's many. Is it many? What's that popular? Is it meningitis or something? Huh? Not polio. There's meningitis, and it reacted, and I started having a growth somewhere on my voice box. Fast forward to about three years ago or so, or four years. I'm the last uh, son and last child of my parents. We had occasion to take my son, my last son, to the hospital. And the doctor said they must operate. Come on, say patterns. Huh? I'm the last child. He's the last child. About the, around the same age range. The doctor is saying they must what? They must operate. I said no. And the doctor, the same way they told my parents that it was a 50-50, the doctors told us that even this surgery, there was no guarantee that it could, it could work, it may not work. Was my son there many years ago? Patterns have no respect for your grammar. There are genetic markers, spiritual markers in your bloodline. If you don't remove them and you are speaking f French, huh? You are speaking Queen's English. Or you go to a church where they don't believe in addressing these things. 
Even if you're a pastor, you can you can be you can be you can be backward. I'm not saying this affects everybody. I'm just trying to explain certain because some of you are looking at the wrong places. You are looking for the markers in the wrong places. Your father beat his mother. Now you are also testing your mic and your punches on your wife. You are you are banging, you are hitting the door out of anger. Very soon you will transfer the punch to the right owner. Be careful. Come on, say be spiritual. You have to be spiritual to see some things. And this is the best time for you to take two months, three months, address it. But you must have a victory mindset. Don't have a mindset that this is what you'll be doing for the rest of your life. There's no time. There's money to be made. There's money to be made. The age gap between myself and my son. What's the age gap? Uh, 35. Or there about. So, you can imagine something that happened to me at a particular 35 years later. And somebody is telling me rubbish. That there's nothing like pattern. Please, are you with me? Yes, sir. You must have a victory mindset. I'm not asking you to be afraid of the problem. I'm saying, have a victory mindset that between me and this problem, yes. somebody will come out of the ring. Yes. And, and I'm the one. Yes. This is not the time. I, I, I mentioned the story of Anna because I want to bring out a principle there. And if I forget, remind me. Because I will tell you that the reason why many of us are not delivered is because of very little things. My so- When Anna came year after year, came year after year, came year after year, there was no solution. This time when she came to the altar, she came weeping. She did, there was nothing to pray about again. Are you with me? There was nothing, like, she just stood before the Lord and started weeping. There is something that is called the covenant of your tears. When you stand before the Lord and you really don't have words that describe how you feel. And you just stand there and you weep before him. And then the Lord sent the prophet to her and said, that affliction is now gone. Has the prophet been there all these years? He has been the priest, I mean Eli. He has been the priest for years. Has seen the woman come year after year. Saw her coming with her sacrifice. But that day, there was something about that prayer that day. She didn't hold back. She didn't say, oh God, I've sowed a seed last year. I did this idea. She just came tired. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, Pastor David, please give me that scripture, that the Lord stores our tears in his bottle. The Lord has a bottle where he stores tears. Some of you are not aware that God keeps, he keep, it's like an old man, an old grandmother that keeps old old things in the house, bottles, sticks, God is a very old person. He's not a, he doesn't have an iPhone. He doesn't use all those things. But bottles, he likes bottles. Huh? Psalm 56 and verse 8. Let's read that one very quickly. Psalm 50. God is a very old person. He likes gathering things that people are not interested in, like bottles. Do you have it? Look at this. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears where? In your bottle. Are they not in your book? Give me another version. Because when people think it's King James. Look at that word wandering. You know what it means for somebody to wonder? That's significant, but that's not our message for today. You have taken account of my wanderings in Amplified. Put my tears... You see, when a man, be- a man begins to wander up and down and his destiny is not beginning to add up, you get to a point in your life, nothing describes your frustration. You can't even tell people because they will just tell you it is way. They will tell you it is way so I can carry your problem and move to the next street. Because they don't, they are also dealing with their own demons. They don't have time for, say it is way, sir, let's be prayerful. Let's be. They are just trying to micromanage you. 
They don't know anything about what you are talking about. And they don't want to feel depressed because of your problem. So they will tell you it is well. This guy said, give me that scripture. He said, thou, you have taken account of my wonders. Hey, is it UI UX today? Hey, is, it, is it web design tomorrow? Should I go to school? Uh, open university? Hey, I'll finish now. No job. Ah, no husband. Hey, they say it's uh, one online prayer meeting in the morning. They say it's one they are doing at 6 p.m. You have attended everything. He said, God has taken account. Come on, say account. account. Say, where did she go yesterday? Say, uh, revival. Say, How many days? Say, 21. Say, uh, what of that? Uh, she was there. God was taking account. God has taken note. All your genuine efforts eh, that you think nobody saw. The Bible says God takes account. Because the day God decides to answer you, he will not talk to anybody about it. It will just happen. When they now ask you, how come you have this testimony? You say, it's God. I don't know. How many of you have been there? You just realize that by the time it happened, you could not say this was what you did. It was just God in his mercy saying, today is the day. Come on, I'm prophesying to somebody. I say, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. You, you won't, oh, okay, yeah, you prayed, you prayed, but it's, you can't really say the prayer, you can't really say the fasting, you can't really say the VG. You just know that on this day, 23rd of July, you got home, the sickness was gone, the pain was gone, you could now sleep well, you could, they couldn't find the lump again, the growth was gone, the ulcer was gone, the asthma was gone. You just find that, ah, ah, ah. Say, so thou was taken into account my what? My wanderings. All your effort, all your pain, all your wahala, all your let's come to this place. Mama, it is hundred thousand you pay. You rush to this other place, say it's on five thousand. You are just donating and donating money you could have used for yourself. And the Bible says God started taking account. When Jesus came, he told us he was a teacher. But now we can see that God is also an accountant. He says, Put my tears in what? Are they not recorded? What are these things that are recorded? My tears. God has a book. Every time you are cheated, every time you something happened, God said, don't talk. Keep quiet. And it seemed as if you suffered for nothing. God recorded it. This is where the book of remembrance comes out from. Come on, are you with me now? I said, this is where the book of remembrance comes out from. If there is nothing recorded, there is nothing to remember. That's why I, I, I really don't understand when you have a problem, you tell everybody except Jesus. The man who takes the record, who goes into the, he records everything you're going through, is, is God himself. He said these tears are recorded in book. God has a Welcome to Harvest World Assembly where the word comes like fresh bread from the ovens of heaven. And as you listen to God's servant, Pastor Gwenga Shafe, keep these words as they purify you in this journey of destiny. Message the ancient gods of the Bible. Ancient. Give me first, first Samuel. Some of you have not read the book of Samuel. Some of you, your name is Samuel, and you still have not read the book of Samuel. Eh? Even some Davis have not read Sam. <laughs> All right. First Samuel. Hmm. See, let me tell you, when we share the grace, it's not a time for you to be making noise and jumping up and down and connecting with your friends. Sometimes you need to stay away from people, come to the altar and shed your tears. Is somebody listening to me? Is you, oh, is, Please, is somebody listening to me? It's your, it's your moment. There are some things you really cannot explain to people. It's a bit complicated. Just bring it to Jesus. First Samuel 7. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now. I this recorded in this world. Hallelujah. It is 
Say, may the Lord give us that grace. First Samuel chapter 7. And the men of Kerea Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord. If you want to get the full uh, benefit of this story, you need to go into uh, start from maybe chapter 5 or so. Uh-huh. So maybe I will run through this very soon. All right. If I get some good ratings, if I don't get it, I'll, I'll just be. F- flying that revelation by myself you know give me that scripture and the men of Kerajerim came and first up the ark of the lord and brought it into the house of abinadab in the eel and sanctified eliaza his son to keep the ark of the lord and it came to pass while the ark abode in Kerajerim that the time was long, for it was what? 20 years. How many years was it that the ark had been gone? 20 years. 20 long years. People were going to church. They were going for prayer meeting in Israel. There was a, there was the priest would come and say, the Lord bless you, the Lord calls the light of sin, but God was not there. You know, we can do church without God. Sometimes we have our program, opening, prayer, uh, uh, worship, Sunday school, uh, Monday school, uh, uh, prayer meeting and we just do it we have the prayer points already listed there is no spontaneity there is no move of the spirit and it's all in Jesus name but the ark had been gone for over 20 years which means a child they gave birth to 20 years ago didn't know what it meant to be in church and experience God he didn't know so when our old churches started losing their sons to some of the newer churches, this was part of the problem. But nobody agreed. We only uh, say, uh, say the, that service is too long. Somebody was in this church some time ago, and uh, my wife was asking, so are you blessed? Yeah, say, I was blessed, say, but the service was a bit long. I just smiled. I said, they have not opened your fire. <laughs> when they open your fire, they serve, you cannot be looking at the time. Because I only have one question for you. Let's define long. It's relative according to physics. Huh? Long is what? It's relative according to... That means what is long for me may not be long for you. Do you watch Netflix? Do you have a Netflix account? Share. Do you like the shows, TV shows, the series and seasons? Say yeah. Do you have anyone you're watching? I say yeah. How many seasons? I say, oh, those ones. That's like season nine. What's the title? He said, Dynasty. I know the way they act those movies. The final two minutes of that episode, something will happen. So even if you don't want to watch, you'll be looking for data. You'll be hungry, but you must buy data. Say, data is life. Huh? So I, I took it as a positive or a, a feedback with mixed feelings. Because I just looked at her like, okay, she doesn't really have much problems. So, so, so. 
Have you, ever, have you ever been to the hospital and you had to wait for the doctor? And it seemed like everybody who went in was taking so much time. Huh? So much time at the hospital. Come out now. Huh? You, everybody has an emergency. Say, madam, say, I'm coming. Just give me five minutes. You see, five minutes. I went to see a doctor. I went with my daughter. Doctor just looked at the result. Say, oh, it's nothing much, nothing much. Just give. I say, hey, wait. Talk to me, I'm a father. Don't play that card with me. Nothing much, nothing much. O- on top of my HMO, on top of my money, on top of it. What is in this resort? I can Google it, but you are here, so talk. When he saw my eyes, he started to explain, okay, this one is low, this one is a bit high. I said, okay, so this one, what is this one? I said, this drug doesn't work. We've tried it before. We started talking. Because <laughs> I knew how long I waited to come inside. You just used your hand. Because, and he was even eating corn. Early in the morning, eating corn. Uh, roasted corn. Wow. Seriously. So be careful. Who, who is attending to your child? All these corn eating doctors, they may not help you. 20 years. A child of 20 years today would have finished university. If he went to a private school, would have graduated. 20 years is a lot of time to be without God. When many of us, and when we look at some people who have pursued God and they found him, we, you, you don't know why they are very they are very energetic about it. It's because of what they found. In the pursuit of God, what they found, what they found, the day God told them, don't go out, and they didn't go out, and God preserved their life. And the day God told them, this morning, 5 a.m., go out, and they met with in, incredible profit. You now tell them that uh, people are doing something, I say, no, 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 no. Every major bust up of my life, you, you just look back. You just realize that every major boss of your life, where something major happened for you, because you are following God's directions. Not trend. God doesn't do trend. God doesn't do something because it's popular. It's popular for you. His own civilization is way ahead. 20 years a nation without God. Give me the next verse. He said, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord, wail, prayed, cried. Give me the next verse. And Samuel spoke unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord, with what? Did God make room for partial repentance? He said, if you return with what? What the word all means is that there is no segment of your life you will hide. Where have you been in the last 20 years? Oh, you married. Oh, you are married now. Oh, okay. Who did you marry? Jezebel. Ah. You will bring. <laughs> mm. You must return with, with all your heart. You see, your heart is like a bank. It has a signature card for every major thing that has happened in your life. You cannot bring a part and say, take my... No, no, no. I need your soul too. I need your body. Not just your spirit. Not just for you to be speaking in tongues. That's, that's cheap because that's a gift of the spirit. I give you. But I need your soul. But most of us, we contend with that one because giving your soul to God comes with a price. Because it means that you will not take a will, your decision until the Lord has sanctified that will. Say, it's he that walketh in us both to, to do, will and to do of his good pleasure. That means God is working with you to choose the things you are choosing. That's what it means to be a Christian. Not to say you are baptized at Jerusalem. Uh, sorry, what, what's that? Uh, River, River Jordan. The people doing the baptism at Jordan, many of them are not even born again. They are just doing it to make money. Now. And they will even give you a certificate. $30. I'm not joking. If you like, go and, you that God has been working with, go and put your head under one guy that is smoking banner to because you are in Israel, you want to no, I'm not joking, no. I'm not joking. There are many of the tall guys there, they are, they are heavy drinkers and heavy smokers. That you are in Israel doesn't mean you are close to God. <laughs> Next verse. 
Put away all the strange gods. Let, verse 3. Put away all the strange gods. Give me verse 3, verse 3, verse 3. Put away all the strange gods and Ashtaroth. You see this Ashtaroth? I have a genuine hatred. Ashtaroth is the sex god. Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth in ancient text. Ancient text. Eh? Is the when you read some of the writings of Ashtaroth, she's the one who says, I am a man, I am also a woman. That's Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is the one who demands worship from people a man. But you say before you worship, you must dress like a like a woman. He likes it. Oh, sorry, she likes it. She's also the god of sex change. She's also the goddess of LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, E, I, G. Ashtaroth is the god that America worships. Even in Israel now, you are not permitted to speak against anybody who is homosexual in Israel. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. The man of God told them that they must repent and put away the strange gods and he specified Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is a sex god. Most of us are slaves to this god today. Ashtaroth will prevent genuine Christians from marrying. It will make quality men unavailable, quality women unavailable. So you have a lot of Christians who are hitting close to 40. They can't do anything about it because they are Christians. But certain strategy is that if he puts you in that gap for too long, you will compromise. And that's all he's looking for. Say, he doesn't mind the time. He can keep you there for 10 years. So if you are not spiritually on your feet, if you are sleeping, if you are a sleeper, you remember that message I preached, awake, oh sleeper. If you, do, if you are only sleeping and saying, it, everything is alright, God will do it. You will now realize that there are many spirits that are involved in your matter, including Ashtaroth. Because... Why am I emphasizing the show of the gods that now that the fasting is over, don't bring the gods back. Come on now. Don't bring those gods back. Please, are you with me now? Don't bring the gods back. Don't, and how many Christians do it successfully is that they become careless and they explain away their recklessness. Things like God will understand. Or God understands. Or nobody is perfect. Are those statements true? Yes. But there are loopholes that Satan can catch on catching on. Look at what he said. He said, Take away asteroid from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord. The word prepare is very significant. Unfortunately, this today is not for Bible study. I would have taken all those words. Prepare your hearts the way you prepare your food. If you are to prepare something that the president will come and eat, the, the extent of care, patience that goes into it, Samuel says, prepare your heart like that. And serve him only. Can you see the word service? Can you see the word service? This is for those who think they can relate with God the way they like. God says, it's not only for you to worship me, you must serve me. We are in a day now, people serve with their lips. God says you will serve me. You cannot serve God without a cost on you. Your money, your time, your effort must go into it. If not, it's not service, it's pleasure. Please, are you with me? Aha. Next verse. No time. I, see, I promised Pastor David today. Then the children of Israel did put away Baalim and what? And serve the Lord now, let me quickly say something. When I come back to talk about the ancient gods of the Bible, I will still talk about it. You see, Balim is, as a, is a male god, god, small g. The female counterpart of Balim is Ashtaroth. So, most of the demon spirits that we know, huh? including, what was that one at Oshun State? Yeah, yeah, Oshun. Huh? All those ones that wear white and say they are very holy. Huh? All those female deities, like the one that I prayed for in the East, where they, she is, their family produces the, the, the lineage, the priesthood, and they must be women. 
All of them fall under Ashtarot. Ogun, Amadioa. What's the one in your village? Ogugu. They are all under. <laughs> so Baal is like a general word for gods that have capacity for seduction. Are you with me now? Their major strength is what? Seduction. They will not tell you don't serve God. They will say combine. Balim will never tell you don't serve God. He will say combine. When Christianity came to Nigeria, they, they landed at Ogun State. Ogun State people rejected Christianity. Then they decided to what? To collaborate. To what? There was, there, there was a song we used to sing. If you, don't, if you don't know that song, it's in tongues. The song means in Yoruba language that embracing Christianity does not mean you should not serve your father's idols. So when Christianity was struggling, when you go to history, they'll say Christianity first came, CMS, you, you read all those stories. They didn't tell you this one. That they met with resistance. So in order to make it compatible, they now adjusted the, so a code, a line in that code, to make it compatible not only with iOS, but with Linux and Android. The original software is what? It's iOS. But we need more customers. So they now adjusted something so that it can also be compatible. And that's, what, that's why today, Ogun State still has that problem. Ogun State is not even as developed as Ondo State. It's the gods of that land that is worrying them. 